I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. I want to welcome you to a manner moment. I am your host, Dr. Marshall, and truly we are very grateful for your continuous support of our program. Weekly we come to you to endeavor to empower you and educate you and to give you guidance according to the word of God. Today we're talking with a very wonderful uh, pair of women who work for the Houston Area Women's Center, and they deal with individuals who experience domestic violence. And as we look around, abuse is very prevalent in America, and it has many, many phases. If you missed the, uh, the show before this, please make sure that you catch it, go back and look at it. You can look at it at our Facebook page, on our YouTube site, amen, and you will, can go to www.mdlm.com ministry.org and be able to get that information. Miss Linda and Miss D D Nico, That's we right. are so very happy to have you back again. Thank you so much for taking out your time out your busy <laughs> schedules, right? And coming to share with us. You guys are do a great work and you do a work that must be very burdensome sometimes from the things that you see working with domestic violence. In the last segment, we discussed what it was like, uh, the, the signs and symptoms, right? Mm -hmm. Who was vulnerable uh, and uh, how it occurs, right? Mm -hmm. And this time we're going to focus on the area of how to, uh, of interventions, mm -hmm. what your organization provides to help us. I want to give you a biblical uh, definition of abuse before we do. Abuse, the harm or self-gratifying use of a living being is inflicted by a wicked individual, never by the Lord, God never wants you to take abuse, I need to tell you that, or by those who truly follow in his ways. God's loving care for his people and the value he places on your life is in total contrast of what abuse brings to a relationship. So with, with that being said, because we know it occurs, and with that being said, because we know you guys have dedicated your lives to trying to turn that thing around, let's talk about the Houston Area Women's Center, all right? All right. You are open how many days a week? Well, um, our building uh, is open during traditional business hours with some extended hours as well. Okay. Um, however, the most important thing to note for those that are seeking services is that we all do offer a 24-hour crisis hotline. Mm -hmm. So our crisis hotline is available 24-7, 365 days a year, holidays, floodings, whatever it might be, we are okay. certainly available to anyone seeking information. Okay. All right. Good, good. And what's the maximum beds that you have you can have? Well, our shelter, our shelter currently holds 120 beds, mm -hmm. um, and it is specifically designated for survivors of domestic and sexual violence. Mm -hmm. um, so all the services that we offer um, within the organization are specifically targeted for that. Um, and most importantly is that the people that are providing the services are experts in this area. Uh, and a lot of times that makes a huge difference, yes. uh, making sure that the people that are providing that service truly understand the situation and are able to respond in the most effective way using the most up to date tools and making sure that all areas are covered because um, as we mentioned um, you know before in the previous segment or the previous time we visited with you um, it was so important to talk about you know identifying the signs um, and for us is identifying the signs and then knowing how to respond when you're in that situation so certainly if you give us the opportunity we'll talk about safety planning as part of this segment. Well go for it take it, <laughs> take it away. <laughs> um, so one of the most important things for those that are not quite sure um, and we'll talk about all the services but if you're not quite sure what you want to access what you want to do but you do recognize that you're potentially in a situation like this um, you're just not quite sure maybe how dangerous or how concerned you should be um, by calling our 24-hour <coughs> crisis hotline and I'll mention that it is confidential and you can contact us anonymously is that our crisis counselors can ask you you know a few questions get to know a little bit more about your situation and be able to identify exactly what level of risk you might be in. And most importantly is just not recognizing that, okay, well, it sounds like I'm in pretty bad danger, but also what do I do about it now that I know? So our crisis counselors also tailor a very specific safety plan. And this is for survivors who are either contemplating staying in the relationship or contemplating leaving the relationship. Um, 
safety plans can be life-saving um, and we want to be able to have the opportunity to help those in need recognize the situation that they're in um, what are the risk factors that they should take into consideration what are the red flags and most importantly what are the options because there are options available and certainly we have those services available at the Houston Area Women's Center all right, can you share a little of those options with us? Uh, not necessarily given the plan maybe, but share some of their option, the options that they have. You told us a little bit about the red flags earlier. Do you want to elaborate on that or more? Or, you know, can you share what, what like I shouldn't wait till my eye is swollen out here before I give you a call, right? Absolutely. Yeah, or I'm burned, mm -hmm. cigarette burn, mm -hmm. or I've been raped, right? I should be calling you when? Yeah, so at any point where you even have a suspicion, you know, it would be great for us to be able to tell someone it doesn't sound like it's a domestic violence situation because we don't want people to be in this situation. But for those that might be, we want to help them recognize it. Um, so just with, you know, um, the willingness of them, um, you know, wanting to share their story, which we certainly appreciate their trust in us because we know it's not easy um, to recognize that you're in this situation. Um, so we want to be able to give everyone the opportunity to be able to share their story. Um, but one of the things that we talked about in being able to recognize it before it maybe it's too late or before something happens. You know, we want to be able to try to see if we can work on prevention, not just intervention. So in those cases is um, any time that there's emotional and verbal abuse, uh, keep in mind that it could be a cycle of violence. Um, any time that it's occurring with more frequency or the abuse is getting more aggressive, those could be potential red flags, you know, um, as well. So there are okay. questions like these that we'll talk about. Okay, Selena, I, I'm, in my, I'm my mate and I, we, we we, we just not kidding out. We, we arguing, and um, he hasn't really hit me yet, right? Or I haven't hit him yet because it goes both ways, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, But we, I need some, I'm trying to reach out for some help, but they're not, okay? Mm -hmm. What are some of the alternatives for a person like in that type of situation? So the most important piece to think about it that way, you know, it's, it's great if you try to work it out. Um, and a lot of times we do have callers who say, well, I tried to, you know, to find out if we could go to counseling, get help together. Um, is that the person that's suffering the abuse um, doesn't deserve not to get the help. So if the partner, the perpetrator, the abuser decides that they don't want to seek help, that they don't want to make a change, it doesn't necessarily mean that the survivor can't make a change. Um, they can also seek services. There is help available. And most importantly for them to know is that this is not their fault. They're not to blame for it. And they deserve the help. And there are options available for them. Okay, I want to pause right here because you guys have a hotline number and I want you to stop. You're going to give it a couple times. I want you to look in the camera and tell them if you're suffering from any type of abuse, no matter whether it's emotional, whether it's psychological, spiritual, financial, relational, or sexual, you can call this number and get help. What is that number? Right. They can call the Houston Area Women's Center, and our phone number is 713-528-2121. And I'll repeat it one more time, 713-528-2121. 2121 and most importantly it is a confidential hotline okay and you guys have a website if somebody is doesn't feel they need to call but they need to look up and just kind of know where you are and so forth and where is the that website it's www.hawc.org. Okay, can you speak up just a little bit and look in that cap? Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's your, look, that's, that's somebody you really know out there, okay? That's right. <laughs> it is www.hawc.org. All right, all right. We want to make sure they have that information because as sure as you're watching this program, there is either you or somebody you know who is suffering from domestic violence in some one of those arenas that I mentioned. And in the earlier segment, we talked about the fact that as human beings, we are our brother or our sister's keeper and responsible for helping to intervene in that which we know is wrong. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to give that information. You want to say something? Else? I did. Um, one of the other things as Celinda mentioned, prevention, I also wanted to talk about our outreach services because if there's someone that is interested and needs some help, we are in different areas in the community, such as myself. I'm at the Sunnyside Multipurpose Center, so people that are interested in help, they can always come out to some of our other locations if they can't get to our main location. Again, I'm in Sunnyside, and so we have um, 
counseling available as well as relationship classes. When you talked about a couple being in a relationship, we do some classes about what is a healthy relationship? Is the relationship that I have the one that I want? Have I started settling and accepting things that's not necessarily what I really want in a relationship? Absolutely. And so that's available as well. Absolutely. That is wonderful. You have shelter, which is immediate immediate services for safety, right? right? But you also have transitional housing. How does that work for, and who qualifies? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically, you know, we want to recognize, again, that um, it can be a challenge to leave a relationship. There's a lot of things to right. consider, a lot of changes that come up, a lot of lack of resources. Um, so we are prepared that for those individuals that have decided to leave the relationship, maybe go and access or reach out and, and, and find placement in a shelter, is that sometimes then you say, well, okay, well, I'm going to shelter, I'll be safe, but then what? You know, what's going to happen after that? And that's where our transitional housing program plays such an important role in being able to continue to help survivors to be self-sufficient, to be able to empower them and give them the tools that they need to be successful. And through our um, transitional housing programs, we can do exactly that. So it's step by step, little by little. Um, there are programs that are available to provide support for six months or a year. There are programs that are available to, um, you know, start off with, you know, providing 100% of support, then 75%, then 50%. So there's just a variety of different programs um, within our organization out there in the community that someone could potentially qualify. Um, so, you know, we're, we're trying to think ahead um, and make sure that there's a continuous, you know, progress in their situation and that we're able to share um, some important tools. So as far as qualification, it, it, it depends on a case-by-case -case basis, um, but certainly we make every effort to make sure that we connect people to the right resources. Right, as well as if they're not at the stage that they're ready to leave the home, they can come to our mm -hmm. offices and have outpatient counseling for individuals, teens, children as well. Okay, look in that camera and tell them, like you're talking to somebody that you <laughs> know, that you really care about and you want to yes. come out of that. If you're yeah. needing some help and you're not at the stage that you're ready to leave the home at that time, you can still get help. You can come That's to our right. service, come to our office. We have counseling one-on-one -on -one, as well as group that are available for individuals as well as children Amen. and teens. That's so cool. That's so cool. In other words, you don't have to go it alone. That's right. You don't have to go it alone. Right. There is nothing like a great support system. That's right. Yeah, yeah, you guys sound like you give really good support over there to help move people along, with it, no matter what their decision is. Because right. we're That's not right. here to judge you. That's we just exactly. want you to be safe and realize your potential and complete your purpose in life. Nobody's here to judge you for that, right? That's right. Right. On-call hospitals for uh, staff for, uh, for survivors of sexual abuse. How does that work? Yeah. So we have just a program. Um, a program that we're so proud of. Um, yeah. We provide emotional support, crisis intervention, um, advocacy, um, a change of clothing to survivors of both domestic and sexual violence. Mm -hmm. We have a partnership with local hospitals around the city and together along with law enforcement, we're able to provide a full spectrum of services when a survivor is an identified in an emergency room. Okay. Um, so typically a nurse will call our 24 hour hotline, let us know that they have someone who's arrived that um, has, you know, um, demonstrated you know some sexual abuse or, or domestic violence will send an advocate out there and provide all these wonderful services and you know one of the things that um, I want to mention that's you know just so important for the work that we do that maybe doesn't sound like the most important part is the change of clothing that we provide um, right. it's so essential and so important in these cases um, if you've ever been in a hospital robe or the scrubs from an emergency room they're extremely uncomfortable so after mm -hmm. having such um, a traumatic experience, to be able to have a clean change of clothing is so important. Um, so for those out in the community, you know the holidays are coming up. Um, so for anyone that maybe is looking for a project or how to donate or give back, of course, we always take monetary donations at the Houston Area Women's Center. But for those that maybe want to do something um, specific, we also offer um, hospital accompaniment clothing. So a donation of T-shirts or yoga pants is always welcome. Right. Okay. Can you look out there and tell them what you need? are absolutely so for anyone out there that is maybe seeking to support survivors of domestic violence you can always donate to the houston area women's center and if you're looking for maybe a specific project yoga pants and t-shirts are something that we're always in need of and it's such an important resource uh, resource for survivors of domestic and sexual violence so we invite you to maybe put together a drive um, within right. your within your group um, and if you need any more information as Nico mentioned you can reach us at hawc.org and there's definitely information available on our website. Yes. 
Amen. All right. Real good. Real good. Children's court service. I want to talk about adult court service, for, if that's okay, first, and then mm -hmm. we'll go to children's, okay? okay. Um, a long time ago, when you went to court, uh, it, it was like your word against his word or her word against, well, vice versa. Okay. Anyway, it was, it was that kind of thing. But now, in most places, and I think it's, all, it's nationally, uh, that if you uh, file domestic violence complaint the state will get involved at that point and help well I know in Ohio they do mm -hmm. they get involved and they help um, so that if you decide that you want to drop it they will carry th carry it through mm -hmm. how does that work here in Texas well the survivor does have the opportunity to work with the district attorney's office and file protective orders and we offer support we work in partnership with them, and so um, actually um, myself and a coworker, we are at the district attorney's office every week um, there so that while people are filing, that we make them aware of our services um, from shelter to the to the uh, hotline, um, as well as all of the services that we have available so that while they're going through that process, if they need some additional support, they know that we're there and we're able to support them. And also within our organization, we have a justice advocate who mm -hmm. is an excellent guide or um, someone who can advocate on someone's behalf. It's not uncommon that someone is looking for legal representation or some legal guidance or resources. Um, so our justice advocate is, is able to do that as well, is being able to provide that support during that um, difficult time. Because after all, it's the legal piece that, once again, is one of those biggest, the biggest challenges that sometimes survivors face. As well as we do have partners that do assist us with some legal services that some of our clients may need. Okay, all right. Because, you know, one of the things about being in a domestic violence situation is that when it's time to go to court, I'm scared to face my perpetrator. So right. I may back out of it. I may decide that I don't want to recant my statement. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of different things. Yes. Because I want to be safe at the end of the day yeah, if right. nothing happens. So it's really good that they can get this type of support and that you guys offer it. And you even have people who are familiar with the legal aspects of it to be able to walk them through and explain to them. Because if I know what's going to happen and I know I have somebody with me, I'm more than likely going to have the courage to stand up and make sure that we work through this process, whatever that may be at the end of the day. Absolutely. Right. right. Okay. Children's court services. Talk to you me. led directly into what our children's court services is all about um, is because we do have advocates that work with the children in case they have been a witness or they do have to testify. And um, those advocates actually can um, take them to where they would have to testify, where they would sit, make them very familiar with the surroundings and so that when that time comes, they feel they're prepared as well as supported. And such mm -hmm. an important support for families as well is such yes. a you know scary thing for children and also mm -hmm. for parents. Um, so being able to have that advocate there to be able to guide them through the entire legal process has been just um, such a, a great service and has been so effective in families feeling um, more supported and as you mentioned, um, strengthened in such a difficult time. Yes. Okay. All right. Community education and training programs. You touched on it. Any? Did you leave any out? Or do you want to elaborate on it a little more? Well, we will go wherever they allow us to come on, out mm -hmm. and, and educate people and talk to them. So, I mean, we've done it with corporate groups to very targeted community service centers to mm -hmm. um, religious institutions, right. um, anyone that will give us an opportunity to talk about, anyone who's interested, you know, out in our community that says, you know what, I want the people around me or the group of people that I'm involved with to know about this. Um, is being able to come out and, and educate them about what this is, um, what they can do to get involved, um, how they can respond, mm -hmm. uh, what are the resources that are available. So it's not just about talking about it, but also recognizing it and knowing how to respond to it. All right. We also have advocates that work with our youth in our schools. As Celinda's talked about the prevention piece, that's where it begins. It's starting when they're in junior high and even earlier if we can to actually educate them about what relationships are and what is okay and not okay to do in relationships. So we have to start early with the prevention piece as what well. What is your success feedback for your program? 
when people that come back and say, you know, I thank God y'all were there. I, I'm, I'm, I couldn't have did it without you. Um, I just, I'm just so grateful that the Houston area Women's Center exists because I don't know what I'd have done right. without having your touch support. I, Celinda can probably speak to numbers, but I can tell you just on a day-to-day -day basis with our organization being in the community for over 40 years, we have so many people that come in and say that it was a help to them. So many people say that they've utilized our shelter, our services, and uh, they're just happy to know that after 40 years, we're still here, still providing services. Yeah, and definitely we strive to do that every single day in the work that we do is, is being able to try um, our best to, to change lives, mm -hmm. um, to hopefully improve the lives of those that are out there experiences it, whatever that improvement might be. And as Aniko yeah. mentioned, um, the people that reach out to the Houston Area Women's Center doesn't mean that um, they're going to automatically leave the relationship. Right. Um, there's a lot of different choices, and as you mentioned, you know, as well, we're not here to judge them or tell them what to do. Um, accessing services at the Houston Area Women's Center doesn't mean that we're going to tell you what to do or right. convince you specifically about leaving the relationship. Um, this is not easy um, and we recognize it, so we want to just make sure that people just know these are your options and whatever they might choose, we will support them. We will support them and guide them um, and just give them whatever resources they might need, whether it's directly through the programs that we offer at the Women's Center or indirectly with um, the community partners that we have. Um, we just want to be, you know, that helping hand. We want people to know that they are not alone and that help is available. That's yeah. the biggest, that's our biggest takeaway, that they feel supported, listened to, and they know that someone is here for them. Yeah, yeah. Again, we're addressing domestic violence on this particular segment, um, um, a manner moment with MDO Ministries. Uh, we want to say that uh, a lot of times we look at domestic violence as occurring in the non-Christian world, but co contrary to popular belief, it does occur among Christians. And Christians should be the first to come and get help. We should be the first to want to line up with the will of God or the way God would have our relationships to be so that we can be a light to others in the community. I want to share with you that this organization is here to help you work through it. We all have something we have to struggle with. One situation is no worse than another. I may do one thing, you may do another. I may struggle with one area of emotional damage. You may struggle with another. But the point is, is not the falling down, but wilding in it and you make an excuse from not coming up out of it. We have resources within the community that are here to help you. Again, if you are having a problem with domestic violence or what you suspect is domestic violence, violence or what you've seen is domestic violence, you can call the Houston Women's Center. And it the number again is? It is 713-528-2121. Again, 713-528-2121. Open 24 hours a day and completely confidential. And the website is? www.hawc.org. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, this work is a lot of work. Yes, it is. It's heavy work. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's heavy work. I used to have a home for transitional, home for homeless women and children, so I know it's a heavy work. Mm -hmm. My thing is that you not only need staff, but you need some volunteers. That's right. You not only need donations, but you need some folks, some bodies. And y'all know me, I'm like, get up and let's do something and make a difference, right? Okay, so um, what would they, should they do if they want to volunteer? Well, we definitely have a variety of uh, different volunteer opportunities within our organization. Um, one of them is special events, so we um, basically host um, different events throughout the year. Um, one of them coming up is going to be um, our Holiday Express store. So whether they want to get involved in doing um, some sort of drive outside of the organization or come in and be part of, of helping during the event, our Holiday Express is an opportunity um, basically for our survivors, those that are clients of the Women's Center, to be able during the holidays to um, gather um, some gifts, um, some tokens of appreciation for their families. Um, and one of the ways that we do that is with all the support from the community who uh, very kindly donate um, toys um, and other gifts that you know the families can share with each other um, during the holiday season. Um, so that's an event that's certainly coming up. But we also have a lot of um, you know, need within programs um, as well. So whether they want to do administrative work or maybe even become a crisis hotline volunteer, 
Um, there's an extensive training to do that prepares you really well to be able to do this kind of work and that might be an option for them as well. And they may also be interested in doing some one-on-one -on work in the community with me. So we have, we provide some training and then they can do tabling events and things like that as well. And what about political and legislative? Lee, what can they do? Well, certainly any time that there's legislation that affects survivors of domestic <coughs> violence, we want to be part of that. We want to voice our opinion. Um, we want to, you know, contact our senators, be, you know, proactive, um, get people involved. And a lot of times you can also find that information uh, on our website, um, also on our social media pages. So anytime there's something where we can join forces um, to hopefully make a difference, we absolutely are part of that as well. Well, Celinda and Mr. Nico, I am so grateful to have had you today. And Ms. Alex is in the audience, but we're glad you were here too. We want to say thank you so much for what you've shared. You've given us a lot to reflect on, a lot to be accountable for, okay? Thank you. And I want to, you to hold us accountable as a community and keep redoing what you're doing. Certainly, I will be an advocate for you through the program um, because I believe life is valuable, amen. I believe this in the sanctity of life I believe in the um, the ability of one to be able to completely develop and attain that which God has predestined them to be from the Christian perspective and that we all have to take a part in helping each other to do the do just so um, for those who struggle who usually abuse they have been abused too they do need help mm -hmm. and so one of the greatest thing I want to tell you is that if you are the abuser or you are the victim remember this you don't have to say anything you can always change Jesus Christ can help you make that change and so can the organizations that are here in the city aid you to becoming a better and a productive person one that you can love themselves and others can like you even more I want to just share with you don't wait till tomorrow today is a great time to make that change we want to thank you so much for watching a man a moment I am your host Dr. Marshall thank all of our supporters please go to www.mt dlministries.org and make a donation or a contribution to aid us in continuing to keep this program on. We love you and we're grateful to you and may God forever bless you. Take care and have a wonderful week.